I'm your book bitch, and I'm back. Hopefully to stay. <laughs> okay, so I actually have a review that is supposed to be the next review. So I'm not going to actually count this under the numbered reviews. I mean, I'll call this, what, 23.5 or 0. Let's call this one review number 0. I'm your book bitch, and I'm back with another fucking book that has fucking pissed me straight the fuck off. Oh my god, you guys. <laughs> like, I, I wasn't expecting to read something for fun and be pissed off quite this badly. So I am an Amazon Prime member, and part of Amazon Prime's thing is you get to choose at the beginning of each month, or during each month, between, uh, one, or between, I think, six different books that they've got up for like early reading or whatever and you pick one of the books and that book's that book is yours for good after you know you've picked it. Well, this month I picked The Odds of Loving Gl Glo I can't even fucking say the stupid name of the shit. It's so fucking stupid. The Odds of Loving Grover Cleveland. It is legitimately terrible. Like I don't even feel bad spoiling the review right now and telling you, this book sucks, don't fucking buy it. Don't waste your money on it. If you can get it for free, get something else for free. Hell, if you can, if you can somehow manage to find this shit for free, and you're not uh, an Amazon f Prime First Look member or whatever, if you can find this shit for free, don't download it. Fucking download The Vampire From Hell, because that, I swear to God, is gonna be way more interesting than this piece of shit ever could hope to be. I have read less pretentious shit out of John Green. I have less read less pretentious shit out of authors that are trying to be up Orson Welles' ass. Hell, even in my most pretentious, I can't get this pretentious. And that is fucking saying something. Because good lord, am I ever good at being pretentious. I can out John Green, John Green. And that's just a fucking fact. But, oh my fucking shit. Like, I swear to flying fuck I have never hated a book this much that I couldn't actually even fucking finish hate reading the damn thing. Because it's, it's interesting enough to hold your interest. Like, it, it, it doesn't... It doesn't suck in the same way that Hit did, and it doesn't suck in the same way that, like, Vampire from Hell does, or either of those awful YouTuber books I read. It, it doesn't suck in that same way. No, this one sucks in a completely different, completely fucking pretentious-ass fucking way. This one sucks in the way that it thinks it's got teenagers pegged. It thinks it's doing this great work and that this author is fucking actually doing any kind of service to the people that deal with the mental illnesses and the issues that any of the children in this book have. It thinks it's good at that. It thinks it's good at fucking dealing with any of that shit. And I bet Rebecca Crane, I think that's the author's name, let's find that shit out actually. I've got my Kindle right in fucking front of me, guys. Yeah, Rebecca Crane... You can't write. Like, there. I fucking said it. I'm directly calling out the author on this one. You can't write. You didn't do a single goddamn lick of research. And it shows. And you know how I know that? Because literally my entire life, I have dealt with people who have fucking got issues like the people that are in your stupid ass book, Rebecca. I have dealt with people my entire life that have those issues. I, myself, have a multitude of those fucking issues. And you misrepresented every single last one of us. You clearly, if you did any research at all, it was maybe skimming a w Wikipedia article. Or maybe you actually looked at, like, a map of a sum summer camp. I legit do not think you actually did any research beyond that. Fucking prove me wrong. I have literally never been this angry at a book. Fucking free was too much to pay for this shit. I will say that again. Free was too fucking much to pay for this piece of shit. Fucking, I can write a better story 
in my sleep, blackout drunk after snorting a fuckload of cocaine. <laughs> and I legit don't even write anymore. Like, okay, like, part of the fucking reason I had to take the month and a half off that I did was because I'm going through such mental anguish right now that I can't even fucking write my own scripts for this shit. And I could still, in my fucking current mental state of fucked upness, write a better goddamn story than this shit. In my current fucking state of fucked upness, I could fucking... God! I fucking hate this book! I didn't even fucking finish it. I'm not going to fucking finish it. I made it to, I think, 63%. And honest to God, I'm amazed I made it this fucking far. It is terrible. There is no chemistry between any of these characters. None. None. Fucking none. The only decent character, the only character that's actually worth a fucking shit in this entire book is the character Cassie. And she is so poorly representative of literally everything you have her representing that I swear to flying fuck, you should have just made her a fucking cis, white, straight girl who had no fucked upness because that's pretty much what you fucking got with your person of color fucking anorexic fucked up fucker. Like, legit. That's- she's so fucked up that she's normal. Like, I think the only actual representation of her goddamn disorder that we've seen through the entirety of this book was- Oh no, you can see her ribs if she lifts her arms over her head, and oh no, she popped a fuckload of diet pills the first fucking day of camp. Wow, that's such an anorexic, guys. I've never seen an anorexic who doesn't do either of those things. <sighs> God damn. And then, and then, we've got fucking Grover Cleveland. Okay, like, legit. Okay, I, I... <laughs> I'm so angry that I can't even fucking form a proper coherent thought, but let's fucking try. Grover Cleveland is the secondary main of this story, and he is the son of a guy with schizophrenia, who is apparently, like, obsessed with old presidents, particularly Grover Cleveland. So naturally, he has a son, he names him Grover Cleveland. Well, yeah. Le legitimately, the most interesting thing about this fucking character is the fact that his dad supposedly has schizophrenia, which I can't fucking- m I can't actually say shit about because I only just finally got to a point in the book before I finally fucking rage quit where they actually talk at all about what the fucking schizophrenic father does, and you can't tell, but I did the air quotes schizophrenic because I doubt- she actually fucking did any research on schizophrenia, even. Like, good fucking lord. How do you get to this point where you think you can represent all this shit? You write it into a book. It goes through editors. It goes through a publisher. It goes through so goddamn many fucking checkpoints. And none of them fucking looked at it and said, you didn't do a single goddamn lick of research, did ya? How the fuck did this book get out? Like, legitimately. I've... I have fucking went on Goodreads after I first started realizing what a pile of shit this is, and I was fucking flabbergasted. I've never seen that goddamn many, again, air quotes, legit reviews for a piece of shit like this that were fucking three, four, or five stars. It took me two and a half fucking pages of fucking reviews to actually hit a two-star review. And, like, even that didn't sound legit. Again, air quotes. I honest to flying fuck do not believe any of those five-star reviews are actually legit. And if they are, what the fuck other kind of shit are you fucking reading? Like, good god! Have some fucking respect for yourself. Fucking, you know, I've read a lot of shit, particularly for this channel, but I have read a lot of shit in my life, and there is no way 
any of it, any of it, would ever mean that this counts as a five-star book. <laughs> I have literally never hated a book quite so bad as I fucking hate this. And I actually almost fucking spite finished it just so I would actually have enough to talk about for this review. But no, I'm just gonna fucking harp about the parts that actually fucking pissed me off. Most notably, the pretension. Most notably, the forced fucking chemistry between Xander, spelt with a Z, spelt stupid, by the way, fucking Xander, our main character, this bitch who gets called Z by literally everybody because everybody realizes how fucking stupid her name is, fucking Xander and fucking Grover Cleveland's fucking chemistry is so fucking forced, it makes literally every other romance I've ever read seem natural as fuck. And I don't read enough romance to actually have read any romance that actually seemed natural as fuck. Like, the closest to natural, again, air quotes, that I've actually read in a goddamn book for teenagers was goddamn Twilight. Are you fucking kidding me, young adult authors? <laughs> Please, read something other than what is fucking popular. For the love of God, pitch something other than what is currently popular. Don't go for zombies. Don't go for fucking Twilight. Go, don't go for fucking... I don't give a shit. Unicorn, unicorn spaz fucking mummies. I don't give a fuck. Don't go for that shit. Fucking write something unique. And by unique, I don't mean drivel at a fucking summer camp. I mean actually come up with something fucking unique. If it takes actually like walking around your neighborhood eight, eight or nine times and seeing what your neighbors are all doing to actually get, you know, any semblance of an original fucking character in your head, do it. Because God damn, I cannot be the only one who is getting sick of this shit. I cannot be the only one who is getting sick and tired of reading the exact same fucking story over and 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 over. It's fucking stupid. How is this our publishing, like, how is this our publishing industry? I understand they have to go with, like, what they think is gonna sell, but for fuck's sake, can we have a little respect for ourselves? Can we stop buying the same goddamn story over and over? Can we force them to put, us, put out something fucking new? Can we force them to give us something new? Please, instead of just sitting back and being like, okay, yeah, this is fine. This is great. I'll just read The Hunger Games rehashed and repackaged under another fucking name for like the 50th fucking time. I'll just, you know, reread goddamn Twilight under another fucking different pre repackaged goddamn name. I'll just reread the same goddamn story John Green's been writing by another author and another author and another author and another author who all think they're going to be the next goddamn John Green. I'm so, so goddamn sick of it that I, honest to God, was considering not coming back to the goddamn book bitch because the repetition is killing me. <laughs> But you know what? If it actually gets me to fucking emote like I just did, then god damn it, the bitch is back, baby, and the bitch is gonna stay. If you are looking for a new book to read in December, buy literally anything other than The Odds of Loving Grover Cleveland. It is tripe, it is trash. It is literally, like, I, I would call it junk food for the brain, but I think that's insulting to junk food for the brain. I'm your book bitch, and I'll see you next week with an actual fucking review.